Hello and welcome to another lecture. Today we're going to be talking about fish movement. If you were in class, I would be making you stand up right now and do the dance of the fishes with me and learn all the different fish movements by actually moving your bodies. But lucky you, you get to sit at home and do this. So we're going to go over fins, how fish swim, forces acting on swimming fish, types of swimming and their modes, and how fish generates lift, forcing and forces resisting movement. So fins. We've been over these before. You have your caudal fins, which is also your tail fin, your pectoral fins, which acts as a rudder steers up or down and also helps to them to stop. Pelvic fins mostly control pitch. The dorsal fin mostly controls roll. So these are going to help you um, with balance. And then your anal fin is going to help in stabilization. So a fish swims by contracting and relaxing complex neck networks of muscles along the sides of its body known as myomeres. You have myomeres too. That's how your muscles contract. It creates a series of waves traveling down the fish's body. The rear part of each wave thrusts against the water and propels the fish forward. So part of fish pushing against water Side or tail creates a normal force or reactive force pushing in the opposite direction. So for those of you that took physics and may remember something of the sort, you know that you have um, normal forces and things like that that I am not certified to teach. So we'll move on. Normal force has two components, thrust and lift. All lift forces cancel out over one complete tail stroke. So myomeres make the body undulate or it causes the body to bend because myomeres on one side contract while other member of pairs on the other side relax. So it's separated by connective tissue called myosepta that connect vertebrae. So you have myomeres are the wavy things and myosepta are these white lines. And it's going to contract in a wave down one side of the body and relax on the other. So the fish kind of does a sideways worm to move forward. Body and caudal fin swimming, or BCF, is falls under undulation and oscillation. Median and paired fin swimming, MPF, is undulation, oscillation, and rolling slash sculling. Undulation is wavelength passed down the length of the body. Oscillation is structure fins pivot on base. Like an oscillating fan. So body and caudal fin swimming. Most common fishy swimming. A wave of muscular contraction from head to tail swings tail back and forth. Strength and amplitude of contraction increases towards tail and different fish swim by undulating different parts of their bodies. So depending on the shape of the body, the undulation is going to be a little bit different. But it's a muscular contraction from head to tail. So an anguilliform body flexes one full wavelength with head and acts as a fulcrum or a starting point. Typically slow swimmers, it's usually seen in fish with long slender bodies like eels, lampreys, and many varieties of larvae and oar fish. So then you have your corangiaforms. 
These are these are your tunas. These swimmers undulate the posterior half of their body, so their body flexes less than one wavelength. These are much sw faster swimmers than anguilliforms. These are your tuna, your white sharks, your salmon, your jackfish, and your mako sharks. So they're only going to swim, swim, flex their tail back here. And it creates a much more efficient movement so they can go much faster, much longer. Austria forms, forms, something like that. Body and tail oscillates, so only their tail oscillates. It's like one of those little plastic toys that you wind up and only that tail is going to move. These are relatively slow swimmers. These include your boxfish, your tuopeterase, and your mom mirrors. Median and paired fin swimming. So you have rolling, rowing, or sculling. It's the same as oars. So if it, you've ever seen someone like row a boat, it's a power stroke with the fin expanded and a return stroke with the fin collapsed. Oscillation is pectoral fins oscillated slowly or rapidly, like a bird, so flappy flappy, and generates lift. It requires large mass in the pectoral girdle. Undulation is usually median fins, dorsal and anal. The sinusoidal waves run down fins and can also undulate pectoral fins. Don't worry about that waves word. Um, I want you guys to know more like just the movements and you know oscillation is this type of movement, rowing is this type of movement, undulation is this type of movement and that will that's what I want you to know out of this. So ragiaform, these are your skates rays, manta rays. The thush, bleh, thrust generation involves the passing of vertical undulations along the pectorals that are very large, triangular shaped, and flexible. These fins also may be also flapped up and down like a bird. Diodontiforms. Propulsion is achieved by passing undulations down a broad pectoral fins. So up to two full wavelengths may be visible across the fins like puffer fish. So if you want to visually see any of these, you could Google radioform um, multi-paired fins propulsion and it will show you on YouTube how these like you'll be able to see it amiaform swim by swimming is undulations of a usually long based dorsal fin while the body axis in many cases is held straight when swimming gymnoti forms since propulsion is obtained by undulations of a long based anal fin this is your knife fish. Knife fish are actually really cool to watch swim. Y'all guys need to YouTube that. Bellstilly forms. Both the anal and the dorsal fin undulate to generate propulsion forces. Trigger fish. This is kind of like a dory fish. Those are fun to watch swim too. So. This is your anguilla form, and so you move slowly from more undulatory, your subcharangia forms, to your charangia forms, to your thunny forms, to your ostrich forms. So as you can see, the shaded part it means they move that part of their body. So they're not moving their head, but they're moving the rest of their body, and it gets slowly um, pushed further back down their body as you go down the line. So that's your um, 
body movements. So your undulatory fin motions, your pectoral fin swimmers are your ragiaforms, your skates, diodontiaforms, that's your puffer fish, your labriaforms, I can't think of that one off the top of my head, um, amiaforms, that's your hagfish, I think. That's something, I know, lungfish, I think. Gymnia, gymnodiaforms, and then, um, so these are, and your bestiliaforms, these are all going to use your undulatory fin motions, but these are going to use your pectorals, they're going to use dorsal, they're going to use anal, they're going to use anal and dorsal, and then these use an oscillatory fin movement, but they're going to use pectoral and they're going to use anal and dorsal, if that made any sense. Oh, and A is BCF, and then B, where's B at? I give up. Okay, so the swim bladder acts just like a balloon with the ability to control the amount of gas. More gas is added to the swim bladder to move to a higher level in the water column. Gas is released from the swim bladder to move lower in position. This is why a fish turns upside down when they die because that swim bladder bloats and expands so they flip upside down when they die. That's what happens. Inflating the swim bladder. Inflating the swim bladder is an active process that generally involves a gas gland. The gas gland is rich with capillaries and acts to concentrate oxygen until the pressure of oxygen in these capillaries is greater than the swim bladder. Oxygen will then diffuse from capillaries associated with the gas gland into the swimming bladder, causing it to inflate and allowing the fish to rise. So. More gas is added, fish goes up in the water column. Deflating the swim bladder. The primary gas in a swim bladder is oxygen. To maintain a lower position, the swim bladder must release some of the oxygen. Deflating the swim bladder is a passive process. Higher pressures inside the swim bladder force oxygen to diffuse into the bloodstream in surrounding capillaries. This allows the fish to sink to a lower depth. Drag forces. So you have pressure drag and you have frictional drag. Um, so fish shape and slime coat will help reduce drag. Um, I'm not that worried about a lot of this. So then you have your maneuvers, your accelerators, your cruisers, like your butterfly fish, your damsel fish, your coral fish are more your maneuvers. They're slow moving. So drag and inertia are relatively unimportant. They are deeply compressed bodies that can turn quickly. These are your compressiforms with your round fins. They're, they have MPF rowing sculling. Okay, your accelerators. These are your barracudas, your pike, your giant sea bass, your groupers. They need to overcome inertia. Drag is less important. So maximize thrust by having large surface area in rear of body. And they generate thrust by BCF undulation. Cruisers. These are your tunas, your mackerels, your marlins, and your jacks. They're going in long straight lines very quickly. So low form and friction due to drag and streamline and smooth body. They have higher acceleration. Generate thrust by BCF undulation. There's your references. Okay. I just wanna let y'all know to have a great day. If you have any questions, email me. Make sure you're getting your work turned in. Otherwise, I will be contacting parents. And I will see you guys in the next lecture. Bye.